Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm April. I would recommend that you sit on something or sit in a way that is relatively comfortable to your body. I have to scooch this because I'm going to disappear on the floor. That's great. Technical whatnot. Um, so I usually sit up on something. I'm sitting right now with my feet folded up underneath my hips and sitting on a block. If that is not comfortable to you, don't feel like you have to sit that way. This is what is com most comfortable for my knee right now when it's cold. Like I can sit cross-legged once I get warm, but I'm just plopping down. I have to sit like so. So sit in a chair, lean against the couch or the wall or the dog, um, do whatever you've got to do. Um, my dog Jezebel likes to come over and participate in practice sometimes. You'll see her popping up. Um, and uh, a lot of, um, we're, we've got like this really awesome, like new group of folks. Um, many of you are new to me or returning um, to join practice uh, for us together. And a lot of folks that are here have been doing this Monday afternoon situation for years and years and years and years. We used to practice in the basement of um, the first congregational church or the first United. Gosh, now I don't, the, the big, the big one downtown uh, with the stones. Um, we've been practicing in that church basement for a long time. So it's really cool that we've been able to continue and now have like new people in the circles. So welcome. And uh, like I was mentioning before, if I say something that seems very strange, um, there's a lot of like terminology and stuff that's been like just kind of like almost an inside joke sort of thing. And I, I try to over explain things, but sometimes I'm I come up short because I'm, I'm human. So um, thank goodness, because I don't know how else to be anywhere. I don't know what else to be. So I'll be this fallible human thing. Um, as we're getting started in a practice, I'd like to start with just a short um, a, a dharma reflection, a reflection on the philosophy of yoga. Um, sometimes I have a funny story, sometimes it's not so funny, and uh, we'll do some breathing, we'll om. When I suggest to om, it is just a suggestion, just like everything else that I say is just a suggestion. You can breathe, you can scream into the ether, whatever you want to do, and then we'll, we'll get into some more of the body sort of stuff. And I, I have been encountering a great many changes in my life lately. I think we all are consistently encountering changes. You know, we can even go like very big and saying that, you know, we're in this big shift from, you know, having all of these worries about the pandemic and maybe they're not gone, but our perspective and our status is changing in that. And even if it's a good change, it can be very jarring. And the only thing that you can really know for certain is that nothing will stay exactly like it is forever. It's going to get better. It's going to get worse. Sometimes it doesn't like necessarily even get, get better. It like just gets to a different degree of what it is, you know? But there is a constant evolution to the exact nature of our circumstances that is completely out of our control. I can control how I react to something. I cannot control exactly what happens. And especially since I am this fallible human who's still trying to figure out how to just make it, how to just get here, I'm kind of glad that I don't have to be in charge of everything that happens. I don't have to write every piece of the story. I can just work on making sure I am at peace with the story as much as possible. So we're gonna start off with some face brushing. This is a thing that I like to do. It really helps to like um, stimulate some of the lymphatic system and it can just be a nice way to sort of brush your, your day off or your, your feelings sometimes. <laughs> and so we're gonna start, you'll take the index finger and your thumb together. And then there's this squishy spot at the bottom of your thumb. You're gonna bring that towards the center of your forehead and then brush outwards to your temples a few times. And then starting at the sides of your nose, brushing out to your temples along your cheekbones. And from your temples down to your chin, along your jawline. 
And then going from the sides of your nose down to your chin, so you trace along your lap lines. And then bringing your fingertips underneath and behind your ears, feeling for the soft spot that's kind of at the bottom there. And then right up above the soft spot are these little bony nubs, bony protrusions. And if you it kind of like lift up right from that point, you get a little bit longer throughout the spine. Also in such a way that it tends to help with tension that comes up in the neck because it, it does, the tension comes up. So when I say things like lift your ears, this is the place in the ears that I'm referring to. See if you can stay lifted from the ears as you drop your hands down into a comfortable place in your lap. And start to develop the rhythm of your breath that will take you through practice, or that will ideally take you through practice. Lengthening your inhales and exhales. Maybe you breathe in through your nose. It's a great way to increase your focus and also to filter the air a bit. And if that's uncomfortable, of course, breathe in whatever may, way makes sense to you. We are intentional and we are intentional about our breathing in any of our mindfulness practices because it's a great tool that the other 23 hours of the day, thankfully I don't have to get that wrapped up in worrying about whether or not I'm breathing. Can you imagine if we were to forget? Thankfully we're covered there. Even the biology of our bodies as resources that are outside of our control or that will step in without us having to control everything. And in yoga, we call the surrender to that which is greater than ourselves. We call it Ishvara Pranvihana. It is essentially the peak of our practice to come to that point. And sometimes we fall down off of it and then we get back up on that point. The next time you take a breath in, see if you can take it in a little bit deeper through your nose. And then a big sigh through your mouth. Again, like that. And then reach it up and as you reach it up see if you can release this hip down and line the arm up with your nose and not your ear so maybe the arm comes forward a little bit so i did that little shift in the arm coming forward it didn't fold inwards yeah feel your ears lifting up take a big breath in 
Soften something as you exhale. And one more time like that, big breath in. Softening with your exhale. Come back up through the center and you'll place your left hand at your hip or down at the floor and reach your right arm up. So you bring it slightly forward. It just gives a little bit of release from your shoulder blade. And you wanna to try to get that hand up as far away from your hip as possible. Also releasing your hip down as far from your hand as you can. Nice and long at the back of the neck. Take a big breath in. Soften something when you breathe out. Inhaling, reaching out a little bit more. Softening when you exhale. And then come on up and place your hands on your legs in a way that's comfortable to you. And as you exhale, drop your belly button back, drop your head down, rounding through your spine. And as you inhale, you're gonna roll your shoulders back, press your heart forward, lean forward, look up. Exhale, rounding back like seated cow pose or cat pose, and then inhale, lifting the chest and looking up seated cow pose. And start moving through these spaces, getting the spine a little bit warmer, lubricating these joints, and even feel your pelvis tilting. Take two more rounds, moving with your breath. And then when you feel like you're about even up, go ahead and settle yourself back in a more neutral spine. You're gonna take your right hand, do put it at your hip, and then reach your left arm up so you get a little bit taller. Use this length as you take your left hand down towards your right leg, and then feel the backs of your ears lift up. And then every time you exhale, let your belly get softer so you get a little bit more of a twist. You can use your left hand on your leg to help drive that twist if it's helpful to you. Big breath in, big breath out. And unwind yourself, left hand to your hip and then right hand over towards your, oh, right hand up. <laughs> Feel the lift and then keep the lift as you bring your hand down to your leg. So lifting up from behind your ears on your inhale, exhale, soften into your belly. One more exhale. And then come back to the center and place your hands onto your belly and see if you can make your insides as like tight and rigid as you can. So like you're, thinking of like laying a bunch of bricks in the middle here. And then try to do like some twisting, like try to rotate around that point. And if it's hard just with your hands there, see if you can keep your, your belly that rigid and try to like move your ribs around, like rotating from here up. And then let the rigidness go. <laughs> let yourself take a nice deep breath in and out. And then place your hands on your belly and take that rigidity out even further. Like think of everything inside of your guts gets nice and squishy and soft. If the texture got a little like fluffier or airier, anything that you can think of, like if you were to like replace your insides with something that's just very like squishy, go ahead and toss that imagery in there. And thinking of softening this space every time you exhale, get back to some of that twisting. I feel like I can rotate a lot more. It can become really pronounced when we get into that space and stuff. You can have the belly drawing back with softness, or you can have the belly drawing back like you just laid a bunch of bricks in there, and the softness is much more conducive to being able to find a good rotation. And not only to find a good rotation, but then to be able to open your heart in your rotations so that we get this kind of expansiveness rather than like this kind of bearing down, which has its place, but you know, like at least as a default, it can be nice to try to be more open in our spaces about things. So this time, take your arms up. Again, if you have to change your seat a little bit, go for it. This is gonna be our last thing and the seat like this. You're gonna lift up, getting nice and tall through your spine, and then exhale, pull your elbows down and back. 
Now notice if you're squeezing your shoulder blades back together, we're going to create tension there. Can you just pull your elbows down and back? So the chest is open, at least open-ish. And then inhale, reach your arms up. And exhale, pull your elbows out wide. Do it one more time like that. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, elbows out wide. And we're gonna change it up a little bit. Inhale, reach your arms up. As you exhale, you're gonna twist over towards the right and pull your elbows out wide. And then inhale, take the arms up. Exhale, twisting over towards the left. You're gonna inhale, get nice and tall. Exhale, belly softens back towards your spine. This is a little bit of core work, but ideally not the sort where you have the bricks laid and all of the uh, layering into your movement. Just moving with your breath. One more round. One more time each side. Probably you started twisting over towards your left or your right. So you finish to the left and then come back to the center and then release everything down. We're going to come down onto our backs. I'm going to lean back in space. I'm going to take your right leg and pull it in. And then your left leg is just going to go out someplace that's comfortable to you. So for many of us, having the leg extended feels great. For many of us, having the leg bent feels a lot more supportive. I'm just going to bring this leg in. Feel the front of your hip flexor softening. Move the leg around a little bit. Maybe moving your toes around a little bit, especially depending on how you've been seated. I'm just kind of getting the blood circulating back in there. And then you're going to come into a twist. And you're going to come into a twist with the right leg going over towards the left and find a way to extend your right arm out. For most of us, the corner of the shoulder is going to lift up. So see if you can relax your collarbone a little bit more so there's a little bit less of that corner in the shoulder, like that jutting out. And it's just being inquisitive. It's just like a... It's a question rather than a demand we make of the body. And then let your belly soften on your next exhale. Take one more breath like that, softening on your exhale. And then come out of your twist. Go ahead and set your right foot down. You're going to pick the left leg in. You might slide the right leg out, you might not. You might move the toes around or move the thigh bone around in the hip socket to create a little bit more space. Keep thinking softness in your right hip flexor. I'm sorry, your left hip flexor, both of them, why not? And, and we're going to move into the twist. So you're going to take your, your left leg and start to guide it over towards the right. I also let my foot rest on my leg. If that um, is something that is easy for you, it can help to line up this joint. I'm going to take the left arm and open it up this time. Just notice if there is that corner popping out in your shoulder and then see what you can do to soften it, to relax the collarbone. Maybe as you're here, the softening of your belly allows your ribs to roll a little bit more open. One more exhale. And then rolling over onto your back, go ahead and squeeze your torso against your thighs. They're coming inwards, maybe rocking a little bit from hip to hip. Then we're going to start to bring yourself up. We're going to come onto our hands and knees for just a moment. I really prefer not to spend a lot of time here. If you're not going to come to your hands and knees, you're going to be in a seat, maybe down or up on a chair. You're going to be taking an elbow onto the inside of your thigh and opening up like so. If you're gonna come in onto your hands and knees, you're gonna to need to take one foot forward and you're gonna have it outside of your hands. So it's outwards like so. And then if you have a block, that is part of your practice or you know, some thick novels that you could stack in there. In fact, why not? I'll just leave it there. 
you're going to keep that right hand down on the inside of your right foot and then open your left arm out. And we're twisting open, which is not quite the way that we usually do this. We'll see how this will come into play later. You press this arm against your leg and maybe get this collarbone a little bit more open. Stay for your exhale. And then go ahead and take your hands down. You're gonna to switch to the other side. So take your right leg back and then bring your left foot forward so it's outside of your hand. And then if you had your block or anything that you could use to elevate your arm and make it longer. I leave the left arm down on the inside of the left hand or left foot and then reach the right arm up in the air and push downwards into your left foot. It's going to help to keep your hips a little bit more in line. Reach your ears away from your tailbone. See if you can open up that right shoulder, open up any of the corners or the, the jutting out of body parts in that region. Stay for your exhale. And then go ahead and take your hands down. I'm going to move your leg back. And we're going to come into downward facing dog. I don't like to spend a lot of time here, but we want to make sure to press down from the heart into the hands. So you've got this strong extension down into your palms. After downward dog, we'll be in a forward fold. So you can go right there if you've just decided that I've got too many breaths in down dog, but we're going to try for three. Try to lift your knees up, press your hips up. You can always waddle through your heels a little bit, but don't stop pushing from the back of your heart into your hands. Still keeping with the breath. It'll just be one more from here. Inhale. Exhale. And then you'll come into a forward fold. Feet towards your hands, hands towards your feet. Again, if you feel like you want your arms to be longer, having a block can be very handy for that. Never have to have straight legs here, especially if that's just something your body disagrees with you on. You keep the legs as bent as they can. On your exhale, let your head and neck get a little bit more relaxed. Just notice if you're holding tension there. And then start walking your hands up your legs and we'll come up towards standing. Once you get up into standing, we're going to come into eagle pose. So if you wanted to be closer to something else in order to balance, go ahead and go there. We're gonna fold everything inwards and then we're gonna open everything outwards as much as possible. So take your, I will mirror you, because that's what I said I would do. Take your left leg and cross it in front of your right leg. I'm kind of tack, um, uh, I'm just tapping my toes down. Keep squeezing your thighs together and bend into your knees. So what will happen is that your hips start to go back. And having the knees squeezed together pretty tightly, I've got these toes down for balance. If you're feeling really frisky, you could always lift them up. If you have one arm that you've got down, go ahead and leave it down and then reach this other arm forward. So if you've got one hand that's holding on to like the wall or something, you can have that out and then reach forward. If you can have both hands off, if you're feeling okay about that, it's the opposite arm that wraps on top to wrap your feathers up or to hold on to your shoulders. And then on your exhale, relax your elbows down closer to your belly button. Take an inhale. On your exhale, relax your belly button down and back. Take an inhale. On your exhale, release your hips down and back just a little bit more. And then start to unwind your arms. You're going to unwind your legs. Just set your feet down, reach your arms up, and feel the front of your body opening up. Just giving some space where we were just compressing. Go ahead and release your arms down. And then we'll wrap up the other side of the eagle. So take your right leg across it in front. I've got my toes tapping down there. Squeeze your thighs together and start to lean the hips back, hinging them back. You want to still be able to see the toenails on your front foot. You can hold on to something and reach down. That will release the back of your shoulder if you need balance. But if you are feeling okay about this, go ahead and take opposite arm on top, wrapping up or giving yourself a hug. And if you have a hug, what's cool about that is you can give yourself a little finger massage. There's like this like idea like, oh, I can't get all the way to this version of it. This other version is not as good. No, the other version offers many opportunities. One more exhale. Go ahead and unwind your arms. Unwind your legs, set the feet down, reach your arms up and feel the whole front side of your body lifting up and stretching a little bit more. 
sip in a little bit more air and then exhale, relax everything down. So this was not all of the opening of our body that we're gonna do, we're gonna do a little bit more. Uh, take, your, take your right foot and start to roll around on your foot bones a little bit. So if you can get um, to where you're kind of like rolling over onto the pinky toe side or the toenail side of your foot and try to go in both directions, just kind of want to warm it up. And then do the other side. Go in both directions. You just want to move your toe bones and your ankle bones. I want to warm those up a little bit more because we're going to need them in order to, to get through this. Whenever we're balancing, having like that like kind of shifting in around sort of our response to things is our body trying to like find the flexibility to hold us up. So increasing the flexibility in our feet makes it easy for the body to find that place. What we're going to do, if you have a hard floor, fold over your mat again, or go ahead and grab a towel, grab a sweater, anything so that you don't have your, your foot bones um, pressing directly onto a hard floor. My carpet's super squishy. You're going to go onto the toenail side or toenail side of your foot if you can. If it's really not working for you and you need to keep the toes curled under, or you can try to stay right up on the tippy, 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 tip, tip of your toes, that's okay. But try for the toenail side if you can manage it. You need to get up really tall on your standing leg. Maybe this leg starts to stay straight. And then you're gonna feel your hips pressing forward. Your arms come up and then pull your elbows out and back, just like you were when we were doing some of that core work on the floor. You're stretching the front of the foot, stretching the heart open, stretching the belly. One more inhale, stay there if you can as you exhale. And then release your arms down and release your foot. You may need to do a little bit more wiggling around in your feet if you're starting to feel stuck there. And then taking the other foot and reaching it back, you're gonna to try to come onto the toenail side of your foot, so onto the top of the foot. Tippy toes, fine. Toes curled under, fine. You're gonna to need to make a couple of adjustments so you can start to make that leg straighter. Doesn't have to get all the way straight, but going in that direction. Stand up tall on your standing leg. Feel the hips moving slightly forward, even just energetically, if they aren't physically moving in space, take the arms up and then keep your body lifted as you open the elbows out towards the side. So if your body were to have like this stationary kind of energy, it would be propelling you forward, even though you're not really moving forward. Big inhale, big exhale. Relax your shoulders, relax your foot, go ahead and bounce out anything that got sticky. And if you've been doing your balance work, uh, maybe off of your mat or towards the wall, you can go ahead and come back towards your mat space. We're going to come into warrior two on the right side. So open your legs up as much as you can. You just take the right toes over, the left toes over a little bit, and then bend into your right leg, taking your arms out. There is a slight shift of the hips somewhat over there but the rib cage faces open towards the side. So there's a little bit of a twist. Because if you try to have your hips both facing out towards the side, your knee falls in. You need to be able to pull the thigh bone in, slightly pulls this hip back. Take an inhale. Exhale, relax your collarbones. And then as you inhale, you can smile a bit if you didn't even realize your collarbones were tight. And then you're gonna keep the bend in your leg as you reach your right arm up, go ahead and rest your left hand down by your hip or your leg. And you wanna think of not coming back into this. Can you take your heart and lift it up towards your fingertips? Big breath in. Exhale, return to warrior two and straighten your front leg. We're gonna come up again this time into peaceful triangle. So we're in peaceful warrior, this one peaceful triangle. You can feel how your hips are tilted over a little bit, right? Like I'm not here, I'm here, not here, here, yeah. Lift your heart up and then go ahead and release your arms back down. I'm gonna bend into this knee again. You're gonna take your right elbow down to your knee and then reach the left arm up and over, pushing down really strong into your left foot. So you're opening up through this whole side of your body. Big inhale. 
and exhale. Start to come up. You're gonna lift yourself up straight in the front leg. Shift your hips over and then take your right hand as far down on your leg as is comfortable to you. So maybe not as far down as you really could if you wanted to try, but go to a comfortable place. That way you're still in a place where you can think of relaxing this top hip, letting the top hip roll forward slightly to let your spine get longer. And you wanna be able to reach the arm up without having to worry too much about anything else. We wanna think about this shoulder and this arm. Can you open that collarbone up to your hand? Even if your hand is not directly above your shoulder, can you open the shoulder to open the hand more? Ears away from your tailbone. Exhale, draw your belly in. Bring your hands to your hips, come and stand yourself up. And then switch your feet or you can switch your stance if you would be facing weirdly. We're gonna to come to warrior two on the other side and just flip over like so because it's weird to not face you. So have a bend into your leg and then reach your arms out. If they're getting tired, turn your palms up. Also turning your palms up is a really good way to help to relax the collarbones. This sort of bearing in place can be very um, intense. There's a small softness in the belly because we are rotating the ribs towards the open side. Exhale. And relax your right arm down. You're gonna reach your left arm up and you're gonna reach your heart up to your left hand. If you wanna peek at that front knee just to make sure that it's facing in the same direction as your toes and then come back to an elevated drishti a gaze upwards, perhaps, even just a little bit upwards. Big breath in. Exhale, back to arms even. You're gonna straighten the front leg and then find that lift in your heart upwards towards your hand again. So two strong feet pressing down, heart lifting up towards your arms, breath still working for you. Big breath in. Exhale, arms coming back down. And then put that bend into your right knee again. Make sure that the, or the left knee again, make sure that it tracks over the toes. And your elbow comes down and the right arm comes up and over. Ears out of your shoulders, foot pressing down, shoulder blade releasing from the spine. So we're not back here where it's all tense and tight. I'm letting the arm only roll forwards so that my shoulder blade is less compressed. One more exhale. And reach yourself up. Straighten the front leg. You're gonna shift those hips. So this one drops down, this one goes over slightly. Slide the hand down to a way that's comfortable to you. And then reach this arm up. We have two legs that we're standing upon. This arm is not bearing a lot of the weight. It's really deep into the belly that's holding you up in this long spine and your shoulder's gonna open up the top arm. So think of your arms as being an extension of your shoulders. So if I'm here and my arm's up there, it's not really in one piece. If I'm here, my arm is here. My shoulder opens up my arm, Ken. One more exhale. Hand to your hip, draw your belly in, stand yourself up. Go ahead and bring your legs in much closer. In fact, bring your legs in so that they touch. So you've got the big toe edges of your feet touching. Take your hands to your hips, bend into your knees and sit your hips back so that you come into chair pose. So you wanna squeeze your legs together. Make sure that you can see your toenails, but then look forward and then you're gonna reach your arms back like you're flying. Take an inhale. Exhale, let those wings reach back a little bit more. Inhale. Exhale, reach the wings back. Straighten your legs and come out of it. We're gonna go back into it just a couple of times. Uh, first time, you may repeat this one twice just because the second one can be a little bit like crunchy around the belly. So first one is gonna to be to sit back in your hips again. You're gonna take your right hand to your hip and your left hand to your knee, but it's just placing the hand there because you don't wanna like push your gaze over. Then you're gonna open your collarbones to twist as you soften your belly inwards to twist. So many things. Ideally, this knee is not going forward, right? We're trying to keep those both in line. 
One more exhale. Then unwind, come back up to the center. I'm gonna take your left hand to your hip, bend into your knees, your right hand comes to your knees. A good thing that I've, I've learned that helps with having one knee that juts out in front of the other is sometimes it happens because you're not standing on both of your feet. Like you might stand only over on the one leg. So if you stand strong on both feet, it will help often to keep the knees in line. So broaden those collarbones, soften your belly, and then come on up, releasing the twist and unbend your legs. One more time each side. You have the option, of course, to do this one again, or we're gonna do things a little differently. You're gonna bend into your knees. You can leave this hand at your hip, but instead of having the hand on the outside of your knee, maybe you're able to get your elbow down there. It gets much harder to balance this way, so you can always leave your hand at your hip, or you can press your palms together. And then the pressure of your palms together might open your collarbones and open the twist and soften your belly. Ooh. And then unhook your elbow, unwind the twist, come back up. And then bend back into your hips. And you're gonna twist over, hand to your knee, keeping that first option, elbow to your knee, having that kind of halfway through, or both hands come together and the heart opens and the hips pull back and you stand strong on both feet and your collarbones are open and your belly is soft and your ears are out of your shoulders. One more exhale and unwind. Go ahead and come on up. And then separate your feet like a little bit more than hip width apart. Reach your arms up. Once you get your arms up, you're gonna feel your hips shifting slightly forward, right? So we are often standing back here. Shift your hips forward, and then feel your belly stretching up to your heart. So it's a, it's a, it is a back bend, but it's like the five degrees back bend. It's mostly a heart opener. We wanna lift and expand the front of the body. Big breath in, and then soften it back to neutral. One more standing pose. I know there's a lot of them today. If you have a block, you can grab a block. If you have a couch in front of you, a chair, any of those things that you could use that you could put a hand on that is not directly on the floor, because getting your hand all the way up to the floor and doing all of this can be a little bit wonky. Anything at all around your house, if your dog is compliant and stationary, that works too. Mine's too small. So you're going to take your right foot and bring it forward. I want to think of a stance that's like warrior one. So it's, it's, you know, having that like space in between, but a little bit shorter. So if you were to say like, go to warrior one and just like hop it back a little bit. Your back toes are turned in slightly, front toes are turned forward. You're going to take your object in your hand or your object's going to be about yay in front of you. And you're going to have your hand down on it. Keep this right hand at your hip. I want you to think of both of your hips lifting up off of your thigh bones. It's a little bit more spacious and then pull this right hip back. Because if I'm down in my thigh bones and I pull this back, I just get tense and weird in the back of the knee. So lift and then pull it back. And then I'm gonna turn my nose over towards the right and then my shoulder's in the way. So I'm gonna start opening my shoulder open towards the right. And then my belly is gonna soften in so I can open up a little bit more and have a better view. And then cue myself to lift the right hip up and back a little bit more. It's okay to have a slight bend in this leg. It would be better to have your arm up higher if that's difficult for you. And then if you wanted to, you'd reach the arm out from your shoulder. My shoulder does not go straight up towards the ceiling. My arm does not go straight up towards the ceiling. One more inhale, feel your spine getting longer. Exhale, soften your belly. Then your hand goes to your hip. I would recommend bending the knee a little bit to come up. And then we'll switch sides. The last standing thing, last pretty hard thing. So a stance like warrior one, where you've got the space a little bit shorter than warrior one and we keep the legs straight, at least almost completely straight. And then you're gonna take your hips to face them forward. Leave your left hand at your hip, take your right hand down to whatever it's gonna be on. You wanna have a long spine. When you feel like you're gonna take your pelvis, you're just gonna kind of like, Boost it up off of your thigh bones and then pull that left thigh bone back. A little bit more squared. Look over towards the left. Open the left 
collarbone. Soften your belly to see if you can rotate that more. Keep pulling the left hip back towards your right foot. Ears out of your tailbone, ears away from your tailbone rather. And then you're gonna open the arm up from the shoulder if you want to. This is already hard without the arm going up. If anything, I want you to open the shoulder. It doesn't matter where the hand goes, which I think is kind of been a recurring theme for our postures today. It's where is the shoulder opening to? But if you did have the arm up, you might stay there for one more breath in and one more breath out. And then take the hand down, bend the front knee a little bit, go ahead and lift yourself up. And then we're gonna come down into a wide-legged seat. So fancy yoga transitions, we're just gonna take it all the way down. So bring yourself down, legs out wide, and keep the legs bent. Much like where we were, I gave a modification for being on the knees earlier, you're gonna take an arm down on the inside of your leg. You're gonna press, let's say that left arm down on the inside of the leg. If you're mirroring me and you might feel a little bit more open in this collarbone. And then you're gonna reach this arm up and open. Take an inhale, feel your arms reaching apart. Exhale, soften your belly, my goodness. One more time, inhale. Exhale. Soften that, go to the other side, sliding your arm down, pressing the arm against the leg, reaching your left arm open, ears up nice and tall, arms expand, exhale, softening into the belly. One more time, inhale, exhale. And unwind yourself, come back to the center. Uh, we're going to take, um, the right leg out in front and you'll cross your left leg over. You do adjust your flesh or sometimes sitting up on something. So if you had like a couch cushion, a rolled up um, towel, etc., anything to give you some space. If you can get the foot, so the foot, the sole of the foot on the floor, great. If that's not working for you, if it feels weird in your knee, just leave the foot on the same side of your leg. If you can get it crossed over, lovely. You're gonna hug onto this side. And then take your left hand in nice and close to your hip. Notice I didn't lean back towards it. I wanna keep it in close. Lift up behind your ears, soften your belly into this rotation and see if you can pull your thigh bone more into the center line so that it might have a tendency to drift that way. You're gonna pull it in and exaggerate it, but soften your belly on your exhale. See about relaxing your collarbones. One more exhale. And then release your twist. And unwind the leg and wrap up to the other side. So you'll take your right leg in, crossing it over if that works for you. Right hand in nice and close, hug the thigh, lift your spine, soften your belly, open the collarbones. One more breath in, deep breath out. Release that twist, unwind your legs. We're gonna bring the soles of the feet towards each other, open the knees out, and then lengthen your body forward over your legs. And it's not like you're trying to get your nose down towards your feet. If that works for you, if it feels good, go for it. There is absolutely no functional purpose for bringing your um, head close to your feet, especially in this, these circumstances. This is about relaxing the back. So just finding the capacity to soften into this pose rather than have some idea of what you think the pose should be as if it was supposed to be another way it would be. We weren't giving control over exactly how it is to begin with. One more exhale. And starting to come upwards out of that shape. I'm gonna to start to make a transition into laying down on our backs with a few closing shapes before our Shavasana. Uh, we're gonna start off um, just kind of relaxing into the floor. So go ahead and come down, 
to let yourself stop and you want to find a really neutral place to your spine, I would recommend leaving the soles of the feet down with your knees bent and your arms relaxing at your sides. Take a moment to observe any places of tension or resistance or maybe tuning into some stuff that's already starting to settle a little bit more. And then checking in again with the placement of your feet, you're gonna want them to be pretty close to your hips. So go ahead and walk those heels in a little bit closer to your hips. Check that your knees are facing up and there's a couple of inches in between them. And then if your knees are feeling stacked above your feet, you've got some pretty good placement going on. Take your shoulder blades and start to snuggle them underneath your heart. So it's just giving a little bit of a tuck inwards. You might feel like your heart is more open already. And then you're going to keep everything on the ground. You're just going to push more into your feet so your tailbone starts to roll up or like a very small fraction of your touch starts to roll up. And then as you exhale, go relax that. So push down into your feet, feel that little roll up and then exhale, relax it. Do that two more times. And then you're going to push into your feet, roll your tailbone up, see if you can roll most of your bum up and then keep rolling so that eventually your waist lifts up and your ribs lift up and then you're going to wiggle your shoulders in a little bit more, press your palms down. If you can, maybe you hold hands underneath your back or physically hold your hips up higher. Maybe you can have another little wiggle of the shoulder blades, just kind of exploring what space you've got. Now press down into your feet real strong, all four corners of them and then start to release your hips back down, going down through the spine, just relax into the floor. I'll go up into bridge pose one more time. Try to keep contact with all four corners of your feet to help to protect and engage the under leg muscles to support you. Go for it, push into those feet. Maybe you can wiggle the shoulders in. You can hold your hips, you can hold the floor, you can hold hands underneath your back. Reach your kneecaps away from your nose. Pull your heart upwards towards your nose. Check in with the big toe edges of your feet again. One more breath in. And then relaxing your shoulders and releasing your body down onto the floor. I take your arms, open them up. Let your knees roll over towards the right, coming into a fairly gentle twist. One more exhale. And then bringing your knees up and over towards the other side. Another fairly gentle twist, not wrapping ourselves up too much yet. And then come back to the middle. You're going to take your left thigh and cross it over your right thigh. So I've got no space in between my legs. It's kind of like when we did eagle pose. You're gonna press down into your right foot, hop the hips a little bit over towards the left, just a little bit. And then as you twist over towards the right side, you're gonna go just until your foot comes down or until your body stops, whichever comes first. So I'm gonna leave this foot on the floor. I'm not letting the knees go down any more than that. And what we're gonna do here is soften the belly. You might have to wiggle some shoulders or something. Listen to your body. If you've ever had this idea that something's in the wrong place, you're probably correct and some investigation would be useful. So you're gonna keep contact with your foot on the floor. Keep softening in your belly. This will get really deep into this outer hip and really deep into the churning right in our center. We've done a lot of twisting today, so be sure as always to drink a lot of water. It just kind of helps Keep everything moving in the body. One more exhale. Now start to come back, unwind your legs, come back, neutralize your hips. You were probably shifted to one direction or the other, so shift back to a place that feels pretty steady. And then take your right thigh on, cross of your, on top of your left thigh. And you're gonna do a little hop of the hips over towards the right. 
Twist over towards the left just until your foot comes down. Notice anywhere else that's getting tense. See where you can soften, not just in your belly. This is one of those places where we are going to get more if we relax and allow ourselves to receive it rather than trying to like ratchet yourself into a pose or a situation. One more exhale. Start to unwind your legs as you bring yourself back into the center. Bring your hips into a more neutral position. Wiggle your feet out a little bit wider. Knock your knees against each other and just kind of settle in. When you get to decide where you take your final rest, and you're in Shavasana can be marvelous. Staying here can be marvelous. Maybe your body would be more at rest by sitting up in a comfortable chair, allowing yourself that time to be soft with yourself. Finding some place to rest is going to be really useful. If you wanted to take a seated meditation, just make sure that your body is supported. You're not having to, um, to, to worry yourself too much. And sometimes that's just sitting up on your own and you just make sure you have a straight spine and that's enough support. That's good. You know, legs to move towards that more um, classic Shavasana shape. We can let the legs extend out, let the feet flop open. We leave the arms by our sides, palms facing up in a gesture of being open to receiving. It's like if you want to get real woo-woo about it, it's like all of the good vibes that you cultivated throughout your yoga practice, if they were floating around the room, you're leaving your palms open saying, okay, I'll take some of that. And one last little piece, if you are laying on your back, see if you can give a gentle snuggle of your shoulder blades a little bit closer together, not so that they're pinching, but just so that the front of your heart is a bit more open. If your lower back starts to bother you, just bend into your knees, again, coming to that constructive rest, or maybe roll over to your side. We'll be here for a few minutes being nice and soft, just being here with the breath before we wrap up.
Try to come back to your breath. Coming back into your body and into this point of our practice, no matter what the exact posture or arrangement you've chosen for yourself, this is the final act of surrender, gesture of surrender, of releasing, being with what is. It is the apex of our practice. Being in these places physically of just kind of like giving in to the moment can be a really good practice, a really good tool to help us be able to give in to what is when we find ourselves facing what is off of the mat, maybe not feeling quite so zen as this exact moment, but hopefully being a little more familiar with it. As you start to roll yourself over to one side, if you've been on the ground, we'll just kind of start to make this transition, taking a moment to give yourself gratitude for your practice and having the opportunity to practice together, even across all of these distances and in this new way for many of us. And then coming up to your own version of a comfortable seat, and just like at the beginning, sit in a way that makes sense in your body. Don't worry about having to come into any specific shape. With your hands at your heart. A seal practice releasing one more ohm together. Big breath in. Oh. Going down to the love and light that reside within each of our hearts. Namaste. Thank you all so much for being here. Let me know if you have questions about anything um, here or elsewhere, um, or reach out to me online. Um,